Before we get started, let me show you how it looks without CGI. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna start with reference. Um, this is always gonna be the first stage, so I'll never skip this part. As we can see from here, uh, the final render is just the collections of all this reference, and I take a lot of uh, visual as, um, visual concept from here, and take this one, uh, a little bit of this one, and use this as a color grading reference. You can always find inspiration from Pinterest and ArtStation, and you can take uh, small pieces of it and then combine uh, combine them to form a completely different concept and work from there so we're gonna start from here i'll give you a link for this character uh, in the description so just go and download that one open the file and just copy paste it here so why do i start with the character in the first place because one of the most important thing to make your scene realistic is to have a proper scale reference i scale this reference to match my height so everything in the scene will be relative uh, relative to my height now that will make things so much easier in the long run. We'll start by modeling the shelf for the book. So shift A, plane, hit R to rotate and Y along the Y axis and type 90 to get exactly 90 degree along the Y axis. And I know it's a bit irritating to show you like the tiny detail over and over again. So I'm just going to say uh, the this shortcut only once and fast forward whenever necessary. Okay, now press tab. Z and 1. So this will lift the plane, one blender unit upward, um, but still keep the origin at the center. I will turn on the screencast key so that even if I forget to mention the shortcut key, you will be able to uh, catch up from there. Let's lift the top vertices a bit higher to make it look like, uh, like the reference and I'm going to rename it as shelf by hitting F2. Now hit I to insert the face and I want to add some boundary at the bottom of the shelf uh, to give some design. So let's insert uh, add loop by hitting Ctrl R. Now we can see that this loop is not perfectly straight. So to fix this problem, we have to scale this edge along the Z axis. So just hit S and 0 on the number pad. Now we, now we can hit Ctrl B to bevel this edge and try to maintain the same width as the inset face. Now select the other two face and extrude along X and we're going to do for the side as well. Now we can select the bottom edge and hit F to give face to these three edges and then uh, two more F. Now I will enable the cavity so that we can see the cavity more easily. Go to the side view, uh, which will be the front view by the way, and add another loop cut. So just scroll your mouse button up and down to add more loop cut and bevel these edges. Add more loop cut to the side so that we can cut a hole here and then bridge them together. Just select this face and delete them. Now we're going to bridge these two holes by uh, selecting both of this whole loop and then hit F3. Then type bridge and enter. So do, this, uh, do the same for the rest as well. Now I'm going to add more design into the shelf by selecting all the edges and face so that we can inset and extrude them all at once. Now select the top face and then duplicate them to give some uh, floor for the book. Duplicate it and then hit P, then selection to separate the selected area. Right click and then set the origin to geometry. Now let's array this floor and add a solidify modifier to, to add some thickness because right now it looks like a like an infinitely thin sheet of paper. So now we can increase the array to match our uh, shelf height. Now let's make some books, but I but I will not pay any attention to the detail because um, uh, it, it will barely visible to the camera anyway. Select this face, duplicate it, and then separate it. And remove all these modifiers, uh, set the origin to the geometry, and model the most simple looking book ever created. Um, just add loop cut and extrude it like 
like this and we're good now duplicate it uh, using alt d and not shift d this is because in case we want to change the shape of this book uh, later down the road then now uh, instead of making changes to each and every one of the books then we can simply concentrate in one book uh, which will then edit the whole book at the same time now all you have to do is move and rotate this book uh, duplicate a bit more and then arrange this um, a bit more random and not like this. This is just to show you the overall looks and just uh, for the sake of the tutorial. So give a bit more extra attention to this part if you want to get more dynamics look. It's not visible in this video but uh, hit M while selecting all these visible uh, objects and then add to the new collection. This is because we're gonna need this new collection later on. Press Shift and S and choose this cursor to origin this will move the 3D cursor to the origin and we need this uh, origin to be in the, uh, the center because now whenever we add new object to the scene then it will generate from these 3D cursors locations. Just move and scale it to looks more like a reference. So I'm just adding more detailed and match the overall concept. This is just scaling and then moving inset and extrude, uh, nothing fancy. I add a bit more bevel and subdivision to make it looks more realistic because right now it just looks so perfectly sharp at the at every corner which is not um, looking good. Now I'll instance our bookshelf which we've uh, previously modeled uh, from this collection instance. I will quickly set up the camera for different angles and change the resolution to 1920 uh, by 824 and slide this opacity all the way to 1 to darken everything outside the camera. I'm gonna add this camera to a new collection to stay more organized. Um, do this early on because we're gonna add more and more objects to the scene then it will become so hard to find exactly what um, what you are looking for. So duplicate this camera and hit O to go to the camera view. Make sure to check this icon. Place the camera to wherever you want and then repeat this process as many camera angles as you need. To animate this character, select the armature and hit Ctrl and Tab. This will enable the pose mode and now all you have to do is select any bone that you want to um, transform and then use the transform tool to animate however you want. Now once we add all the camera, uh, it's time to add bookshelf. If you want to add new instance of this bookshelf, you can press Shift A, go to collection instance and then select the collection that you want to instance. Now we can duplicate this however we want. Uh, we can also rotate, move and scale as per requirement. So why do we use instance? Can we just duplicate it? Of course we can but it will add up the vertex count which increase the memory usage uh, but, in, 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 but in terms of instance um, it do not increase the memory usage plus it improves the uh, viewport performance now I just want to look through its camera and then add more self uh, to fill the empty space you can use this random transform operation to uh, randomize this so just repeat this process till you are happy with it I simply copy and paste this concrete floor from my previous uh, from my previous project. Uh, I'll give you a link for this one. I downloaded it from Mega uh, Mega Scan Library. Just add this plane here to look more like an entrance instead of this um, like empty space that appears from nowhere. Instead of having the, uh, this circle looking like too flat, I add a bit more uh, detail to it using the same procedure. Extrude, bevel and inset.
this is the time to animate your camera go to the first frame hit i and choose this location if you want to animate the rotation you can select this rotation now go to the uh, go to the last frame and do the same thing here since all the keyframes are set to ease in and ease out we have to manually set it to linear interpolation so let's expand this tab and go to the graph editor reveal the curve uh, hide this uh, y and z because we're gonna, uh, not gonna use it press t and select this linear interpolation you can adjust the value directly from here now do the same thing for the rest of the camera and you can also adjust the focal length to let the camera view a little bit wider so for this specific shot I want this camera to rotate around this wall so I add this empty uh, at a point of interest um, select the camera go to constraint tab uh, choose this uh, track to constrain up should be y and 2 should be negative z this is how it is I don't know why now if we just animate the location then the camera will always point to this wall that's exactly how we want uh, simply uh, repeat this process for all the camera now let's switch the camera from different angles add a new camera go to constraint and choose this copy transform select this speaker and just pick it from here this will let the new camera to follow the exact transform of the of the other camera to switch from one camera to the other then just add another copy transform constraint and pick the second one we can use this influence slider to tell which camera uh, we're going to use and then the bottom constraint will always um, overtake the top one so go to 100 frames and hit i uh, while hovering uh, into this slider and move one frame ahead and slide this all the way to one and then hit i again so what's happening here is that the switch camera will use the the, the above constraint till 100 and then switch to another camera after that one this might not look exactly the same as the native uh, camera uh, this is because we have to match the focal length uh, for each camera but uh, don't worry about it for now uh, repeat this whole process for the other camera so if your keyframe is not where you want it to be you can simply select the native camera and not the switch camera and just move these dots to where it should be After we're done with the camera, we need to animate the character of how uh, we want to shoot in the green screen. Animate your character as we did before. Uh, let it walk and visually see how the film will look. Now let's animate the focal length for its camera. Select native camera. Remember this uh, focal length value. Now go to 100 frames and then select the switch camera. Hit I uh, to key this first uh, value. Then move one step ahead and then type the value of this uh, second camera focal length. And hit I again to nail it. So let me explain what happened here. The switch camera will use 28 millimeter lens um, till 100 frames and then will use 24 mm lens after that. Now repeat the step for all the rest of the camera. Okay, let's add music to our scene uh, to preview the looks and feels. So select this plus icon, go to video editing, and then video editing. I'm gonna change uh, this file browser quickly to outliner and disable the camera. You can add your music from Shift A and then Sound, or you can simply drag uh, from the file browser itself. 
you can add all your background music and all the effects here so that you don't have to worry about if the if it's gonna match with the background music after you render the final output so we can do it everything here you can use K to split and G to move and that's pretty much you need to know here so from here you can go back to any tab and make changes per requirement so that's it for this part one. Please consider subscribing to this channel if you're interested in visual effects and want to learn something new. So feel free to head me into my DMs and ask me any problems that you have faced along the way. Uh, we're going to find a solution for that one. And until next time, bye-bye.